than that. Interesting situation. How do we handle uh, a lack of attached gingiva? We have a site that um, we look like we have attached gingiva and we have mucosal tissue. So I like to sit and tell my patients, you know, there's, there's two types of, of, of gum in the mouth. There's the attached gum, the pink gum in between your teeth, and then there's the cheek gum. When teeth are lost, bone will shrink down and in or up and in. And oftentimes that cheek tissue, that movable tissue will follow it and end up on the facial aspect of where we want our implants to be. Many of you may have situations where a patient has an implant and a crown, abutment and crown, and they, it looks fine. You take a radiograph, it looks fine. And yet the patient is feeling something, sensitivity, uh, maybe bleeding, um, brushing their teeth. And it's because there's mucosa on the facial aspect of those implants. We can't have that. So here I'm going to, to make an incision. And um, uh, we have our implant. And um, we're suturing it closed. And two weeks post-op, you can see how fast the tissue will heal. However, three months post-op, it's time for me to uncover the implant. And I still have to have a band, a two millimeter band of attached gingiva on the facial aspect. And I really don't. So here I made a mistake. I used what's called a tissue punch. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and uncover the implant so I can make my final impression. Again, this is not an implant training course, but I think many of you understand what I'm talking about. Um, I was gonna take an impression, but uh, oh my gosh, what did I do here? I don't have attached gingiva on the facial aspect of my implant. It's right in mucosa. This is not acceptable in today's environment. So I kind of backtracked a little bit and I took my scalpel and I'm, I'm making my incision on the lingual portion of the crest. I need to create a two millimeter minimal band of attached gingiva. So I'm taking the attached gingiva that was on the lingual portion of the crest, and I'm gonna move it towards the facial uh, portion of our implant. How do I do that? Well, I'm going around the tooth and I'm elevating like my envelope that we talked about. And I can see the implant, I can see the tissue. You can see that the lingual tissue is totally intact. I am not elevating or reflecting that, that lingual tissue whatsoever. In this situation, I'm taking a tall healing abutment. I think most of us would understand what a healing abutment is. It's a tall post or screw that's threaded into the implant that penetrates through the soft tissue. We're getting to where I want to be here. Now, how do I create attached gingiva on the facial aspect of my dental implant? I'm taking my reverse cutting needle and I'm going from the facial to the palatal aspect, but I am not engaging the lingual tissue. I am not engaging the lingual tissue, which is still attached to the bone. I'm now going around that tall healing abutment. I'm simply looping it around that tall healing abutment. I'm going to turn the needle around, and I'm going to go from the distal facial aspect of that healing abutment, not engaging the lingual tissue, not engaging the lingual tissue, wrapping it around towards the mesial and tying my knot. I've now moved tissue that used to be on the lingual aspect of the crest, good attached gingiva, and I moved it to the facial aspect of my healing abutment. You can see where I made an incision with that tissue punch and I kind of traumatized the mucosa. The body heals well. Doctors, how fast does mucosa grow? A half a millimeter a day. We're leaving exposed hard tissue, exposed bone, at least a two millimeter band in that area. I do not cover it. I don't do anything special. It is, this is not a painful procedure for the patient. We're actually, we actually sutured the attached gingiva that was on the lingual aspect of the crest to the healing abutment. I did not engage the lingual uh, attached gingiva whatsoever. Three weeks post-operative doctors, we have a band of attached gingiva where we did not have it before. We now have a healthy situation with, with the suturing technique that is amazing. We're then able to make our final impression. And here we made a nice screw retained Bruxer 
final restoration. Mm -hmm.